going to be together again to worship our Lord and to and to be blessed as we come into his presence. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. I give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. I give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Glory be to Christ who loved us, washed us from each spot and stain. Blessed are you, O God, our Father. We praise you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you've blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Blessed are you, our God and Father, who has destined us in love to be your sons and daughters, adopted for all eternity in and through all that Jesus Christ has done for us. You have freely bestowed your grace upon us in your beloved Son. You have made known to us your will in your word. We praise you and thank you for your word, for it contains all that we need to know about you and about salvation and how we are to live in your presence. Thank you and praise you that we have been sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit the guarantee of our inheritance. Blessed are you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's turn to our Old Testament reading, Isaiah 2, 2 to 5. We're going to read it responsibly. In the last days, a mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his path. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning forks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise.
before God in a prayer of confession and supplication. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, O God, blot out our transgressions, forgive us our sins. We know our sin only too well. It is painful to us, and we know that it is offensive to you. Time and time again we've set out to be holy, but sin keeps getting in our way. Have mercy on us, O God, have mercy. For your love is steadfast. Your covenant is an eternal covenant. You are our God, and therefore we cry out when sin gets the better of us. And Father, yes, we confess it does get the better of us. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed, even when we have set out in your strength not to give in to temptation. Have mercy on us, O God, have mercy. Send your Holy Spirit, that our spirits be renewed through your Spirit. Send forth your Holy Spirit, that our lives may be recreated in the image of Christ, and that at last we may be the men and women that you have always intended. Have mercy on us, O God, through Jesus Christ, ever seated at your right hand, and to you be all the praise and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. We turn to our Gospel reading, John 8, 12 to 19, and again we're going to read it responsibly. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know why, where I came from and where I am going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, 
where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. So let's turn to our Bibles in Ephesians 5. And we read verses 8 to 20. We have the Pew Bible, it's on page 1145. Five, eight to twenty, please follow. For you are once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. May God truly bless to our understanding those readings from his word. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. <laughs> we return to our series on Proverbs and we're looking at Proverbs 4, 18 to 27 and we have our first message on this passage tonight. Let's follow the reading. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. 
My son, my daughter, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight forward, be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. We begin by thinking about two contrasting things, light. Think of the first gleam of daylight just as the sun begins to rise. Then picture the dawn as it slowly brings light to the sleeping suburb, the sleeping countryside, until the rays of the sun taps everything in its warmth. Think of the heat increasing as the morning goes on, until the sun is at the very highest point in a cloudless sky. Darkness. Many of us do not know what darkness really is. Living in a city, there are so many sources of light that real darkness is unusual. Astronomers actually talk about light pollution, spoiling our views of the heavens. Some years ago, at at, um, at Christmas time, my wife and I, we had just left our sister's or Ginny's sister's property at Cecil Plains on the Darling Downs when the car just went dead. This is about nine o'clock at night. No engine, no lights, nothing. I rolled the car or allowed the car to roll to what I thought was the left-hand side of the road. It was dark. And I mean dark. It was a cloudy night, no moon, no stars, and of course, no street lights out there in the country. When the car finally rolled to a stop, I got out of the car and I had to get on my hands and knees to work out where the car was in relation to the white line in the middle of the road. Fortunately, no police car came along while I was on all fours. I would have had a difficult time explaining my position and action. Yes, when it's pitch dark, even after your eyes have adjusted, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. By the way, it was one wire which had rusted through, which caused all the problem, and my brother-in-law, who's a very good mechanic, very good at anything, had it going in no time. These pictures provide us with a vivid contrast between the believer and the unbeliever. They are found in Proverbs 4, 4, 18 to 19. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. The Lord Jesus takes up this theme of light and darkness when he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, John 8, 12. The unbeliever is walking in darkness, but the believer has the light of life. Paul says to believers, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live, or literally walk, as children of light, Ephesians 5, 8. There is then what the... 20th century Dutch American theologian R.B. Kuyper called a radical antithesis between the regenerate and the unregenerate. Well, to break that down in everyday English, Kuyper is saying the difference between the true Christian and the unbeliever is enormous. It is like the difference between darkness and light. And furthermore, we need to understand that as light progresses, the light or the darkness increases. So let us contrast the righteous and the wicked. 
those walking in light and those walking in the dark. Darkness is often used in scripture as a picture of ignorance. Light, therefore, then consists of knowledge, wisdom and discernment, rejecting evil and loving what is God's way. When someone says they're an agnostic, they are in fact saying that they are ignorant. They haven't a clue about life. They haven't a clue as to why they are here on earth. Instead of wearing the agnostic badge with honour, they need to realise what agnosticism really stands for, 100% ignorant. The overthrow of agnosticism agnosticism or rebellion against God can be pictured as a shining of light into the darkness of ignorance and unbelief. Truth, like a sudden light shining in your eyes when you've been in the darkness of sleep, can of course be annoying if not painful at first, but gradually as you wake up, you grow accustomed to the light. We need to shine the torch of truth into the eyes of slumbering sinners. We need to wake them up to their dangers, to their ignorance, to their foolishness. Yes, for many it will be painful at first. For many it will be so painful that they will turn away and reject it as the unbelievers realise that all this time they have believed a lie, that what they believed was what they believed was right was in fact wrong. And what they believed to be wrong was in fact right. Looking back, they will wonder how on earth they could have been so foolish, those, of course, who come to the light of Christ. We need to bring men and women into the glorious sunshine of God's kingdom, God's kingdom of light, by declaring to them the truth is found in God's word declaring to them the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Darkness needs to give way to light. Ignorance needs to give way to truth. Death needs to give way to life. Well, what are the fruit of light and what are the fruit of darkness? Holiness is referred to in Scripture as walking in the light. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the house of the Lord, Isaiah 2.5. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to fellowship with him that is God, yet walk in darkness, we lie, and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. 1 John 1, 5-7. Paul reminds Christians in Ephesians 5.9 that the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. The proper Christian armour is the armour of light and it's worn by children of the light and children of the day who do not belong to the night nor do they belong to the darkness but they live righteous lives. As Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, you are all sons and daughters of the light and sons and daughters of the day. Unlike those who are deceived, that is the fruit of darkness, deception, Christians do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Those who are deceived are never sure of anything. As they grope and stumble around in the dark, they are startled by many things. Suddenly they are hit with the thought of what happens at death. But they push that thought aside as the food of deception convinces them that once you are dead, that's it. You're dead. You're finished. You're gone. That's it. The darkness conceals the deception and lies until the light of the Lord Jesus reveals the truth. Paul warns Timothy of evil men and impostors who go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. However, Christians are not to be like those or these unbelievers who are asleep and because of their darkness 
keep bumping into doubts and frightening moments of insecurity. Christians are to be alert and self-controlled, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. Christians are to be counter-culture. They are to be Christ-minded, responding to Christ's love in loving obedience to his word. And not simply walking along with the crowd, not simply going with the flow, and not taking upon themselves what the world continually dishes up to them, but standing firm upon the truth and the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christians are to show the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, becoming more and more like Christ and shining for him. Light leads to sincerity. Darkness leads to depravity. It is when we bring things into the light that their true state is seen. What do you do when you want to determine the real colour of a fabric or even a shirt? You have to bring it into the light. My wife asked me, why am I wearing a tie which colour is obviously clashing with the colour of my shirt? Well, in the poor light of the room at 6am on Sundays, I had mistakenly put on the wrong shirt. The light reveals the true colour. We need to be exposed to the light of God's word. The nearer we come to the light, the better we see our true state. The closer we come to Christ, we are more aware of our failings and shortcomings. I was talking to someone the other day when they looked at me and asked me if I had had tomato for breakfast. A little bit embarrassing to say the least. Again, it was a problem of poor lighting. It was the bright sunlight that showed up the dirty spot on my shirt. In the darkness of being away from Christ's love and law, we are not aware of the sin and the idols which clutter our lives. Darkness is a picture of wickedness itself, of depravity. Paul speaks of righteousness and wickedness having as little in common as light and darkness, or Christ and Satan. He warns against the fruitless deeds of darkness, which we are to avoid, but we are to expose instead. He speaks of the need to put aside the deeds of darkness. As Christians, we must never be involved in the deeds of darkness, which include such things as orgies and drunkenness, sexual immorality, debauchery, dissension, and jealousy, Romans 13. There's a need for sincerity in our lives, to be sincere about following Christ, to take up his cross daily and to walk in his way, being obedient to his word, loving him with the whole of our being, no matter what the cost. As Christians, we still tend to wander. We wander back into those times of sins and this transgressions the ways of the world which were part and parcel of our pre-conversion days. Why does this happen? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why? Because we are slipping out of the light, back into the shadow, and if not careful, back into darkness, away from Christ, either through willful disobedience or through complacency or compromise, wanting to be like the world so that we will not be rejected. May our love for the Lord Jesus go more and more. That is the only answer. That his light will reveal our sin more and more, so that in sincerity and in truth we will become more like Jesus himself to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Does your life reveal light darkness. Well, the safety of light and the danger of darkness. The daytime speaks also of safety, of being seen, of not being lost anymore. We associate darkness with trouble and danger. Crimes mostly happen under the cover of darkness. It is much worse to be lost in the dark than in the daylight. How often do you hear that the search for lost person was called off at dark. Why? Well, to begin with, it's hard to see anything in the dark, although these days they have radar which is able to detect light even in the darkness. It's hard to see anything in the dark. And secondly, 
the search is often called off because the darkness poses a threat to the searchers. How easy it is to stumble and fall in the darkness. How easy it is to miss what you're looking for in the darkness. In the darkness, people stumble and fall, but in the light they can see where they are going. Why is it that people continue on in darkness, walking along the broad road which leads to destruction? They do so because Satan has blinded them to the truth of the gospel. They believe they are safe in their darkness. They dismiss the claims of heaven and hell. And if they believe in a God, it is one of their own design, one of their own making, one which suits them, one which does not challenge them or make them feel uncomfortable. A God who will receive them regardless of who they are or what they have or have not done. The only safe place to be is in God's kingdom of light. Salvation is found on the bright, narrow road of life. And then finally, we consider the glory of heaven and the damnation of hell. Jesus spoke of hell as a place outside, a place of darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 22. Peter and Jude say, of false teachers, that blackest darkness is reserved for them. Yes, the broad road of darkness leads to destruction. For the Christian, the full light of day is firstly the New Testament era anticipated in the Old Testament scriptures. Personally, it is to enter heaven after death. Ultimately, it is the final consummation of all things when God will have put everything under Christ's feet and will hand over the kingdom of his and will hand over the kingdom to his father then we who believe will reign with Christ forever we will reign with him what a glorious privilege daniel describes it those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars they will shine like the stars forever and ever, Daniel 12, 3. Revelation speaks of heaven itself in these terms. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. Revelation 21 and 22. Dear friend, have you seen the light? Or are you still in the darkness of sin? Have you come out of that shocking and terrible chaotic darkness into the wonderful light of God's love in Christ Jesus? Have you been rescued, delivered, set free? from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the Son whom God the Father loves. We need Jesus, the light of the world, to dawn in our hearts, to awaken us to the truth and so escape the darkness and judgment of hell. Life will remain utterly confusing otherwise. To remain in darkness People will continually search for meaning and will never find it. The Son of Righteousness has risen with healing in his wings. Look to him and be healed. In the words of Isaiah, we say to believers, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. The light of Christ or the darkness of hell. Why stumble and fall? Why continue to seek answers where they cannot be found? But we can turn to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. There not only will we find the way, but the way will lead us into glory. Let us pray. 
God, our Father, we come to you now. And Lord, we just thank you that for those who are Christians, you've brought us out of darkness into light. You've rescued us from the king, from the kingdom of darkness and slavery to the kingdom of light and freedom and glory. We thank you that you have, as the light of the world, shown us the way and that you continue to show us the way of truth and righteousness. Father, we thank you that you have rescued us. And Lord, we do pray that um, you will use us to help shine that light to those who are still walking in darkness. Remind us of the commission that you have given us to go to all the world and to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples of all peoples. Lord, help us to take that commission seriously. As we walk in the light, as you have revealed yourself as the light of the world, how can we stand by or sit by and see those who are still stumbling in darkness, not knowing um, what they are bumping into, not knowing what is in store for them? How can we leave them in that estate? Help us, Lord, to go and to bring them the light of Christ, that they too, with us, will rejoice in your glorious and wonderful salvation. Be with us in eternity, where there will only be needed your light, which is everlasting and ever shining. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Out of my bonny sorrow and night, Jesus, I Come, and uh, your tithes and your free will offering, you will be waited upon for them as we sing this hymn. to you, not in our own strength, not by ourselves, not because of who we are, what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done for us through his suffering and death. He has opened the way to glory. 
He has opened the way to forgiveness of sin and freedom from guilt. Father, we thank you that in the power of the Holy Spirit we are able to come. And out of thankfulness we want, Father, to give of what you have given to us. Help us, Father, to truly respond in, in cheerful and liberal giving, not just of our money, but of our time, of our talents, of everything that you have entrusted to us. May we be good stewards so that all will be used to your honour and to your glory and to the extension of your kingdom. Receive, therefore, these our gifts and ourselves and all that we have to be used for your glory in Jesus' name. O oh God, our Father, eternal Lord and King, you who rule, who rules over all the earth, whose sovereignty embraces everything that has been created and all creatures. We come before you now to offer our prayers and our supplications, our prayer of intercession, to continue the ministry um, that you have entrusted to us. Father, we bless you for the church and for the fellowship that we have found in your church. We thank you that you have created the church so that your people can, can be taught and that working together we are able to do great things in your name. Grant that in truth the church might be the bride of Christ. Give your church faithfulness as she waits for the coming of her Lord. Strengthen your people, Father, that they would ever build on the solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray particularly for our own denomination. We pray that you will keep the, her teaching pure, her ways true, and her witness effective. Father, we bless you for those who proclaim the gospel of peace, all that we have learned from the preaching and teaching of your word. We ask your blessing upon all ministers, those who proclaim your word, grant that they will be true ministers of the word, not turning to the ways of the world. Lord, remaining faithful and true, dependent on your Holy Spirit, and truly preaching the whole gospel. We pray that you will be with your people, give us joy in our work, and make our labours fruitful, so that many will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to encourage one another to be growing in the knowledge and nurture and love of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you that you've given us your Son to be a light to the Jews and to the Gentiles, to be the glory to your people Israel. We pray for the lost sheep. We pray, Father, that you, you will go before us, opening the hearts of unbelievers to hear your gospel and to respond and to repent and to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray especially for those who have heard the gospel and who have turned their back on you. Father, we ask that you will be gracious and that in the power of the Holy Spirit you will convict and convince them that they would leave the way of darkness, the way of destruction, the way of devastation and turn to the way of light, to the way of truth, to the way of salvation, to the way of eternity. We pray that um, the, that the um, light of the Lord Jesus will shine on all nations. We pray for missionaries that as they bring this light to the people in other countries, that there will be many who will respond. We pray, Father, that the light of Christ will shine brightly and purely, even in this place here. Father, we bless you for the good and prosperous land that you've given to us. We thank you that um, you have given us so much. We still thank you for the freedom that we've been able to come here freely and worship you. We pray for our nation. We pray for our prime minister. We pray for the judges of the courts. We pray for our governors and governor general. We pray for all members of the House of Representatives. We pray for all members of the Senate. We pray for local parliamentarians too. We pray for local governments. Grant that justice might prevail in our land. We pray that the truth of your word will be honoured and that legislation that is proposed will be 
in accordance with your word, and we pray that all who intend evil will be stopped. Father, we bless you for the kindness and mercies of ordinary life, for your providential care of us and for all people. Give strength to those who labour for us, for those who um, look after us, for the police, for medical people, for firemen, Lord, for those who make life and keep us in, in safety. Make us willing, Father, too, to be of service to others. Guide those who direct our tasks that we may live in harmony. And we remember before you members of our congregation in special need. We again pray for Lynn, Lord, that your love and your healing strength will be upon her. We pray for Ruth and that list that it will heal. We pray for others who have special needs. Father, that they will come to you and believe and know that you are able to help them and to lead them through this situation and this, these times of distress. All these prayers and requests we do present to you, O Heavenly Father, in the name of our most blessed Lord and Redeemer, even Jesus. Therefore, we do pray together this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A mighty fortress is our God.
afternoon again, a special greeting to those who will be joining us online. May God bless you also. Thank you.